only Amiga makes it possible but I sure could do without this ugly white mouse and its ugly white cord I don't know how to pronounce this name but uh, let's say Nevin's electronics page uh, was a project for a PS2 mouse to Amiga converter and this isn't the only uh, one of these projects around but it looks fairly simple circuit um, 16F8 4A, which is obsoleted now by 16F628A, um, and to change uh, six, what is it, 16F84A code uh, to the newer chip, only requires you turn the uh, analog, uh, the register for the analog inputs to digital, which is uh, setting uh, CMCON register to seven uh, circuit so far. I've only changed uh, the RC clock. I've used a crystal instead. Um, the RC clock tries to run the, the chip at uh, 3.4 and I've used uh, 3.57 a Powell color crystal um, and one other change I've made just to physically accommodate this board now is uh, moved one of the input pins from uh, port A0 to port A2 and uh, I'll have to change that in the source code which is provided 16F84, a little bit earlier than 16F84A, but still compatible code. This one is a genuine Commodore Amiga mouse, uh, probably from Amiga A1200, but um, it's a ball mouse, so I'm hoping to upgrade from that as well to an optical mouse. I don't have any PS2 mice lying around, so I've gone to eBay and got not one, but three. And there's not a lot to it. This is all ready to uh, have the connectors wired to it. I've got a pre-wired uh, female 9-pin D connector uh, from a scrap project, so that saves the hassle of wiring up the plug. And it turns out I've got uh, more uh, units of the original 16F84 chip uh, than the 16F628 that I um, planned to pour the code to, so I might as well just go ahead and use the intended target. So along the same lines as the original uh, diagram, but not quite as neat, uh, where the PS2 mouse input comes into the top of the chip, um, the original diagram used uh, port A bits 0 and 1 for the clock and data input for the mouse, and all I've done is moved, uh, which I'll have to remap in source code, uh, port AO to port A2, um, and they're both tied by with your uh, 10K resistors, and uh, the mouse inputs are taken from here. Um, the master clear is tied high uh, with a 4K7 resistor uh, and the other major change that won't have to be accounted to in source is uh, the clock crystal 3.57 blah 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 megahertz um, and that will allow me to use a chip uh, that doesn't have an internal clock if I want. So I've stripped the uh, ends of the wires, the other end of this D socket, and uh, used a continuity uh, tester to check I haven't uh, done anything silly with this wiring, and uh, found that it has uh, indeed been wired uh, from pins one to nine across the ribbon cable, and then I've identified the uh, positive and negative supply lines here uh, because the Amiga is actually the power supply for the. Uh, mouse translator and in turn the optical mouse that's being connected to it and with that in mind I've added a, a fairly low value uh, electrolytic across the power supply line and then uh, port B bit 7 which was the unused uh, IO pin in the source code I've um, connected an LED uh, between that and the positive supply and that's something I can use uh, for testing because I haven't actually got the uh, PS2 mice yet so I might write a little program that just blinks this LED and then use it later to indicate a button push or something like that. Um, then maybe even later use it as a control, external control. So the idea was to, uh, if you move the mouse around in a circle while holding the button down, you get an extra output. So having added something. both cables, it should be ready for some uh, test software now. I probably should have uh, uh, led some wrap wire out to some of these pads from the pins of this uh, socket. Uh, it's pretty hard to solder ribbon cable directly to pins of this pitch, even for through mount ICs. Um, there's a, a good risk of shorting them, but I've done it a few times before and I'm pretty confident. It's probably the best shot I'm going to get with the equipment that I have.
And the idea of this heat shrink floating around here was uh, for the ability to uh, clamp down, uh, provide some strain relief for both sides, uh, to clamp a strip over the, the edges of the board using the same uh, nut and bolt hardware to mount the board. So we can clamp a strip straight over here without really wanting to warp the board. So there'll probably be some glue involved. You'd hardly read about it, but um, the source compiles successfully for 16F84, but my PIC Kit 2 programmer, which is here, doesn't actually support 16F84. But I've read on the internet um, 16F84A will be okay, so I do have one of them now. And I'll switch to that. And even for 16F84A, it's only supported in uh, Microtrips uh, standalone programmer for PicKit 2. So I have my PicKit 2 with the 16F84A, have the standalone programmer with the hex file loaded, and I'm going to try and program it right. There we go. And if we look closely at the author's original source, it turns out he was using uh, port B bit 7 as a, an error indicator. So there must have been an LED connected to that. Looks like it was usually on and he clears it in case of an error. Um, so I've pretty much done the same thing unintentionally. But I also remembered that the um, the bit that I swapped from A2 to AO, I've left a, uh, there is a spare pin at um, port A bit 2 then, so I can just use that. So when it came to plugging in the uh, microcontroller, I realised I am actually using a brand new chip here. I'm not sure what to expect uh, plugging it in without a mouse, uh, there might be an error, but uh, the LED there should uh, come on and then maybe go off because a PS2 mouse isn't connected and I don't know if that'll happen uh, so fast that it's uh, not seen but I'm going to try it. I tested for continuity across the power supply to make sure I'm not shorting uh, the Amiga and uh, yeah let's try it. I haven't actually tried this myself prior to this uh, video segment so if it all blows up uh, you'll be right there witnessing it with me and here goes nothing Okay, that's what I expected, and uh, that uh, almost proves the clock is working and uh, the chip is running its program to be able to turn that uh, pin on. That's all I can do <laughs> without a PS2 mouse, because, uh, where am I? Yeah, there's nothing plugged into here. I don't have a mouse to plug into it. I'll see what happens when the Amiga powers up. It is on a delay. Um, it, it takes some seconds before it'll spin up the hard drive and that's a deliberate setting of the X SX1 expansion. So let's make sure it still works. I wonder if the mouse pointer will actually do anything. That's it. I've taken, uh, I've unplugged the floppy, so I really should just click cancel, but I can't. So there's really not a lot left to do now, uh, other than just wait for these uh, optical PS2 mice to arrive. Hi guys, uh, it's the next day, and following on from the uh, mouse translator project where I left it with a, uh, an LED that came on, which could have really been achieved with a, a battery and a current limiting resistor. Um, I didn't really like finishing that up with something that uh, maybe works. So I've been out borrowing today and I've got uh, two PS2 mice. One's a ball mouse and one is optical. So nothing's really changed from the last night's setup, uh, except that I've been able to plug uh, my mouse in. So I'm going to try a ball mouse first. It wasn't the easiest thing in the world to actually find one of these mice in the real world. Everyone's thrown them out, but let's see how it goes. Alright, the big test. Yeah. 
No go. I'm disappointed and sad. Uh, it does help with these things if you plug uh, the mouse into the right port on the Amiga in the first place. So, yeah, they both work. Um, actually, no problem with it. So, this is an optical one. Um, a screen flicker on the video, but yeah, it's, it's actually very good and it's faster naturally than the ball mouse I had for the Amiga. So I already know that I've got a, an Amiga mouse to dispose of. I wonder if they're worth anything. Uh, cancel. Let's push the button. Yep. Okay, booting. Still works. Oh yeah, click through. Yeah, brilliant. So it's time to have some more fun. That's the standard project done. I started storming pretty bad and I'm too scared to use the Amiga. Uh, I can use a replaceable computer. Um, so I'm going to delete the previous video and add the uh, testing to it, re-upload it and make the next video strictly about the software modification to expand this uh, thing. And the, uh, the source code is very well uh, presented and very well commented. You've left press, right press, uh, it might be middle press for a middle key, move X, move Y. Um, it's written very verbose, so it looks like the author's looking for speed because it does look to run in real time. I haven't looked real closely at the code yet. Uh, well, power just dropped out there for a bit, so the UPS just saved my computer. Okay, well, uh, I'm getting out of here, so the next video I'm looking at um, display and controlling something else with uh, mouse hotkeys, if you want to call it, or a mouse hot combination. Uh, and the reason for all this, uh, it's not really my project and I've added nothing to it of my own in this video. Um, the next video I will, but I think it's a really good project for a beginner, uh, absolute beginner, I think could do this and a beginner in software could uh, start to work with this source code. So I'll see you then.